the mother of all my time travel fantasies. And it is so ridiculously 80s, it isn't even funny. And it's Thursday, you know what that means? It's time for us to have another Throwback Thursday. And we're gonna go back in time. Throw up that celebration, because heart of the stories we tell, and me, Rob the Host, is going to take us back to a quick nostalgic look and see how a story was that might be a little bit on the older side. So celebrate your week almost being over as we look at Back to the Future. That's right, we're going back in time. Bum, bum, dun, dun, dun. And the music definitely played a big part, but so did the writing and the acting. The entire trilogy, starting with Back to the Future 1, which is probably the most classic of them, but going through the entire trilogy just gave us this amazing story, one that I don't think could easily be duplicated today, because it was just the right mix of nostalgia, plus a little bit of movie magic that we've grown too accustomed to nowadays. It gave us a look into the past and the future, and as I sit here, I wonder, is there any way they could have gotten 2015 right? I mean, seriously, we had sci-fi stuff that there's no way I would have guessed at in 1985. Supercomputers in our pockets, amazing leaps of the internet. I don't even think I knew the word internet in 1985. And here I am, putting on a show in 2017 on it. And I've been doing it for a year and a half, so not too far from 2015. Of course, the big thing they got wrong was this. It is the year 2000, but where are the flying cars? I was promised flying cars. I don't see any flying cars. Why? But I guess that is both the blessing and the curse of all speculative fiction. From Star Trek to the time machine. But let's get started and throw this up there. So once again, it's stop. Spoiler time. And we're going to go back and start right at the beginning. The elements of fiction. And the first element we normally talk about is the setting. Throughout a myriad of time periods, from what was then modern 1985 to the far-flung future of our past of 2015, all the way back to the Wild West, we're in the same basic area, Hill Valley. And the way that it developed over the years and the history of the place actually takes on a big role in a lot of what's going on. Overall, though, the setting is Hill Valley throughout time. So let's jump in and handle the characters next. And of course, anyone that's heard anything about the series knows that that's Marty and that's Doc Brown. But there's actually a whole list of supporting cast members that deserve to be given a little bit of credit here, too. Now, Doc and Marty definitely are the main characters. They're the eccentric scientist and that kid that gets caught up in the middle of all this. The first movie is obviously more of a Marty movie, but each sequel brings Doc more and more involved in it. And throughout the course, we actually see the most character th growth through Marty, but we still see some from Doc himself. Now, about halfway through, we more or less get a bit of someone named Jennifer, who is actually Marty's girlfriend. The love interest doesn't play a big role in this. The other supporting characters are Marty's two parents and the bully that bullied them and later worked for them, Biff. Now, like I said, Doc and Marty are the two that get most of the screen time, but I think you need to pay attention to all of them as we go. Plot. Plot in a time travel series. I have to take a drink every time I get ready to do this, but okay, the plot is non-linear, because of course it is. At the end of the day, it has to be. Now, the storyline itself deals with Marty's growth, mostly. Marty's ability to come to terms with himself, and we'll talk about that more in theme and symbolism, but it's basically him growing up. However, at the same time, it's alternate timelines, because they create alternate timelines, because they are crazy. So keep in mind, while I'm doing Legends of Tomorrow, Timeless, even The Flash, all of that time travel theory came from the fact that I loved these movies. However, from complex to simple, now let's talk about point of view. We dip into Jennifer, into Biff, even into old mom and dad, but it's almost all Marty. In fact, everything we do is to inform on Marty. So he is definitely the main character and our point of view. So let's keep rolling onto the fun stuff, theme and symbolism. 
let's start at its most basic level. What is a DeLorean? A DeLorean is a failed experiment when it comes to how to make cars, what to make cars out of, and is pretty much seen as the laughing stock of cars. So, Doc Brown made his time machine out of a DeLorean. You know, Doc Brown, the guy who gets laughed at, the guy whose concepts don't work, the guy who... I mean, the DeLorean pretty much says it all right there on the tin. And then there's all the basic time travel stuff. Just the, what would you do with time travel? The little hints here and there. And of course, as far as symbolism goes, how could we forget the Oedipus Complex? In that entire first movie, the whole thing with his mom getting a crush on him, him having to set his parents up, the entire thing just boom. Now I could go into music and all sorts of other things, but you know what I really want to do? I want to touch on the big one, the one I said I would, growing up. Marty McFly starts off very mature, and at every episode of the movies, every installment gets a little more adult. And the biggest way you can see that is when he gets called a chicken. Because, see, Marty has something to prove. Marty needs to be the coolest. Marty needs to be the one on top. Marty can't stand the idea that someone would look down on him or someone would call him a name, especially impugning his honor impugning his courage by calling him chicken and in all three movies we see it he gets in trouble because he gets called chicken and that scene right there is from the third one when a cowboy is calling him out to shoot because what are you chicken the marty that got injured because he raced his car because someone called him chicken the marty that gets into fights all the time for calling him chicken backs down he uses his head he doesn't let himself get baited. He grows up. And that, in a nutshell, is Back to the Future. Learning that your parents did things that they weren't happy with. You're going to do things that you're not happy with. And at the end of the day, you just got to be a grown-up and go with it. All of that, a great coming-of-age story, and more, is why I think that this deserves my Electrum rating. Specifically, it's a fast-paced, good story that's engaging and is funny. But for the final bit of my review, we're gonna do the good, the bad, and the ugly. The good. Their time travel theory is actually pretty decent and created my love for time travel. But you know what else they did so right? The way they did their makeup for aging the actors. When you look at how they aged in real life, you can see a pretty good idea of how spot on that makeup was. If anything, the special effects department undersold how awesome they were going to look all those years later. But what about the bad? As much as I like the basic idea of the time travel, the actual science and how they made it and the ridiculousness of how it worked really did kind of distract from the story. Yes, he was supposed to be a mad inventor, a mad scientist, and that really comes through, but at certain points I think they could have paid a little more attention to physics. And then on top of that, there's a couple of plot holes here and there, especially in what Doc says and what Doc does, that really, you could drive a DeLorean through them. But all in all, it's a good story, with one last bit of ugly in it. And let me start off by saying I do not believe any of this was intentional. And I also think that the way we did things in the 80s was different than how we do things in 2015, 2017, etc. So, gotta take this with a grain of salt. But having Marty invent a type of music, which first of all creates a paradox because he only invented it because he heard it, that isn't invented yet, and specifically taking one that was meant for black people to have invented and turning it into something that a white savior created has ruffled some feathers over the years. All in all, though, I loved the Back to the Future trilogy. What about you guys? Do you have any specific memories that you attach to it? What did you think? And do you think it holds up that you could rewatch it today? Let me know down in the comment section. But before you do that, I need you to do some things for me. Like and share this video if you enjoyed it. And of course, hit that subscribe button in order to get more of my throwback Thursdays and more of my insane ramblings on stories. Because I'm trying to build a community here. One that's going to let me talk about, but also listen to your opinions on all the stories we tell. 
because I want to get down to the nitty gritty. I want to find out why and how we tell these stories as a thought experiment as I'm writing my own. I hope you have a good night, and thank you for walking with me through the heart of the stories we tell.